and gentlemen, my name is Seth Roach. Today we're going to be talking about the measure or the bar. This is where musicians can put all the information to know how to uh, play a song or read the music. Today we're going to learn how to uh, look at this, how to divide it, and some different uh, common terms that you will use when dealing with this guy here. All right, first of all, um, it's like a staff is another thing we can say. Staff. Uh, normally you'll see a staff that's got five lines. Um, right now this measure is not really telling me too much because we're missing a time signature. Um, so normally in most songs, uh, if you remember from finding the one, most songs have four beats in it. So the one, two, three, four. A way to indicate uh, the time is by placing a time signature. So normally you'll see it like you'll see like a, a treble clef or a bass clef, something like that. And right on the side of this, you'll see like a time signature, maybe a four and a four, or a three and a four. All right. Uh, we're not going to be looking at the three four. We're only going to be looking at four four, and we're not really worrying about pitch. So we don't even need this guy. Really, this is what we're focusing on and just the fact that this is a box of time. Okay, so this is how we will be looking at uh, writing rhythms with just a plain box like this without your lines indicating the pitch frequency. And we're gonna put our time signature over here. So we're gonna put our four and then four like that. Um, I don't want you to really worry about what the top four means or the bottom four right now. I just want you to know that four and a four like this means that there's four beats in the measure. So this is our measure, our bar. Um, we need to divide this up into four quarters. I don't know if you're good at math. I was okay, not the best. So we take this measure, now we've cut it into two halves. Alright, let's keep this going. Now we've got our four quarters. Alright. One thing you're going to hear a lot is like a downbeat. You, ever, you hear people talk about downbeats. So really, downbeat is going to occur in each quarter space here. So we will have four downbeats. One, two, three, and four. All right. So, if you remember some of the notes that we were talking about, um, we had notes like a quarter note. This guy here. We had notes like a half note. You know, stuff like this. Quarter rests are half rest or whole rest. I hope you're reviewing that, uh, that stuff. So let's look at each one of these boxes as being able to contain uh, some information. So let's look at this first box here. First downbeat. Right? This is a quarter of the measure. So let's think of all the possible notes that we have looked at that can fit there. We know for sure that a quarter note could fit in there. We know for sure that a quarter rest could fit in there. Um, we looked at eighth notes, so we know that two, two eighth notes could fit in this one. So this would be considered one beat cliches because they can fit into one of these boxes. So to give you an example of what these one beat cliches could sound like, put a uh, quarter note in here so it'd be like one, two, three, four. Bum. It's one. Bum. Right? Watch this. So that's a one beat cliche. Now we can add another one beat cliche 
and then we can add another and then another one beat cliche. So we've got four beats of information here, but technically each one of these is like a one beat cliche. So this would be like one, two, three, four, rest. Da, 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 rest. Okay, now let's look at two beat cliches. This is where things will get a little more interesting. All right. So a two beat cliche, for example, um, the easiest probably to visualize would be just a good old half note, right? Because this half note is going to receive half of the measure, which would be two beats, okay? So this note is not a one beat cliche and it's just extended. No, this guy is considered to take up this box and this box. So it's like you could almost even erase this line. Now that's what a two beat cliche really you know would look like so it's impossible to fit a half into one of these quarters so that's why we call it a two beat cliche uh, here's an example of what this two beat cliche sounds like here we go one two three four bum. so bum. One, two, three, four, bum. Another easy one to visualize would be four eighth notes. Okay, four eighth notes, because we can tie them all together. It makes it easier to visualize rhythms as units when you're especially when you're trying to sight read something, like a piece of music that you've never even seen before. Um, so this would look like this. You have two eighth notes within this one quarter here. This, and we might as well erase this line because now we are crossing here. So this is actually a two beat cliche. So when you see these four eighth notes tied together like this, you know that that's going to take up two beats. Okay, so let's see what this sounds like. So, one, two, three, four, ba, 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 ba. Two beats. Ba, 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 ba. If you did that faster, one, two, three, four, ba, 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 ba. Ba, 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 ba. Alright, that's all for now. See you in the next video.